Hey guys! Now, last week's video was all about the suicide feeling and I was in such a huge down spiral, depressive, crappy mood and I asked you all for tips and advice and I generally thought that by opening up to you guys and admitting that I was feeling that feeling and just talking to you guys would make the feeling magically disappear and it hasn't throughout this week I've still had that feeling and it generally scares me because not at the suicide committing suicide stage but I do miss that feeling of I noticed as well that you know I've been trying to work on my self-belief and not trying to be so hard on myself and not thinking that I'm this worthless person because you guys know that I struggle so bad with that. And I honestly thought I was getting better. I was trying to, you know, build my confidence up again from literally nothing. I had no confidence in myself. And I noticed the other day that my worthless scar that I have carved many, many times was starting to fade. And I thought I wouldn't care because I was working on my self-confidence and I didn't necessarily think that I needed that scar anymore but when I noticed that it wasn't as deep and as dark as it was originally I felt sick looking in that and knowing that it was fading made me feel physically sick and it was a horrible horrible feeling and I just couldn't look at it anymore and that scared me because when it starts to fade like it has in the past I get very very in a very down spiral way and it ends with me like you guys know if you followed from the beginning it normally ends with me recarving the word worthless into my leg harder than the last time so it won't fade as long and I I haven't done that yet but I just don't want that to happen again because I know that in like 20 years time I don't want to look down on my leg and see a worthless scar I don't want to feel like that in 20 years time but it felt horrible to know that even when I've been working on my self-confidence and not trying to belittle myself and, you know, try not to think that I'm so worthless and then to look down and notice that the scar was fading and to still feel that I need it there, it did, it made me feel so, so ill and it scared me because I don't want to get to a point where I feel like I have to carve it again because I know that each time I carve it I make the scar worse and it'll just last even longer and it's a really it really did shake me up knowing that I still care and that I still need that reminder that I'm worthless on my body it made me think like do I am I deep down that self conscious and do I have that much self hatred for myself that I need a physical reminder on my body that I'm worthless. I've always known that I've hated myself and I've never liked myself. I always, you know, I always thought myself was worthless. But when I've been doing work to sort of not be so down on myself, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. And, you know, try not to really get down on myself. But it made me realise that do I have that much hatred for myself that I need a rem physical reminder on my body to tell me that I'm worthless. If I had a friend or a family member who hated themselves that much, or even if one of you guys hated yourself that much that you thought you needed a physical reminder, that would tear me up. Even if I'd never met you, I would feel heartbreaking for you because you shouldn't feel that. You should be confident in yourself. You've got yourself no matter what happens in life. But if you hate yourself that much, you don't have yourself. I don't know if any of you guys have written a word on your body to remind yourself about a feeling you feel about yourself. But if you have, or even if you've self-harmed and you've got scars on your body, doesn't it sort of make you think, you know that you need it and it's addicting, but doesn't it also make you think how much hatred you have for yourself, that you need that on your body? It made me miss that feeling of, the suicide feeling even more and this week has just been a complete downer so if you thought you were coming to this week's video to see a happy Chloe you would be totally wrong because I just feel so lost 
and I haven't felt this loss in a while. I've always had, I've always known that I went to this therapy appointment for this reason and I do this and this and it's all working towards a goal that I can live a life alongside this mental illness and be happy but lately I'm just like what is the point? For years I have been fighting this invisible illness with therapists all thinking that they know better than what I know and that I have this, I have this, I have this and then people around me treating me differently, friends have treated me differently and because you know they don't, they think that if they say even like a sentence wrong you're going to go off on this crazy ramble and lose your whole head and then judgmental people who just don't believe in a mental illness and it's just like seriously what is the point, what is the point of fighting it why can't I just not fight it, still live a life, but just not fight it? Let my mental illness consume me, and if it kills me, it kills me. Or if I can live a life, I live a life. What is the point of digging all these holes within yourself and ripping off bandages and dealing with all this crappy stuff that have happened to you? What is the point? It only, it just seems so pointless. and. I have reached a point this week where I'm just like, what do I do? Do I carry on fighting this and try to get along with this mental illness? Or do I just say, whatever, I've had enough and just let me live a life to what I can with the mental illness taking control? It's so hard to do it, to make a choice of I've got to fight this because it does it's like a never-ending battle you think you've got one problem sorted but then you'll talk about another one and it'll knock it or you have a bad day or it knocks every single work that you've done towards we're getting along with this mental illness out the window and you're just left broken defeated and like now I've got to start all over again each time something comes and knocks you down it gets harder but it's just like seriously again and what is the point I had a really good therapy session and I felt maybe a little bit better but then something else happened and it was just like why why is it when you finally think that you're on the right path, you're feeling a little bit better, you've talked through this, you've done this, and then something happens and it knocks all that down and you're just left. I just feel completely alone and which way do I go now? Do I go back up and try to fight again or do I just lay down and go, whatever, I'm just tired? And it is, you know, some people think that mental illness doesn't exist and it's people make it up and we're just big babies trying to get attention. I have a physical illness and it's still going on, but to me, this mental illness is the one that's killing me. Because with my physical illness, yeah, it sucks and it's a lot of pain and I take tablets, but I've never thought of suicide, but this mental illness is the one that destroys every single part of you. It knocks you down, It batters you around, it bruises you, and yet people look at you like it's the easiest thing in the world to fight, and it's not. It's incredibly, incredibly hard to keep getting pushed down just when you finally think you're on stable ground. When people don't believe in you and make fun of you, it gets even harder. The other week, actually, I had told someone out that I did this support group and they told me that I should shut it down because I am not a professional and that I shouldn't be giving advice to people like me with a mental illness. That it should only be professional people that talk to people with mental illness and that I have no right to tell people what they should do. And I honestly thought about shutting it down, but it was my mum that sort of like told me not to because she goes, you've not, you've told everybody you're not a professional, you're just someone that who's telling their story to help other people and it's true, you know, I'm not pretending that I'm some mental health guru that has all these degrees and knows the cure for every single mental disease and mental illness, I'm just someone that's lived through this for years, it has 
literally driven me to self-harm, driven me to suicide attempts and I am still standing here trying to figure out what to do and I created this group to tell my story, to help other people and to sort of raise awareness and band us together so we don't have to feel so alone in this big, huge, scary fight that a lot of people don't even believe exists. Now I know this video has just been a complete ramble but today I just needed to talk, I needed to just get it all out and sit in front of a camera and just blurt all my feelings out without thinking and I feel better for sort of just pouring my heart out to a camera. And I know some of you will disagree, maybe some will agree. That's one thing I like and dislike about Sprinkle of Courage because I have no respect for myself. I really don't think highly of myself at all. And when you're sitting to a camera and telling all your feelings, you're voluntarily you're volunteering yourself to be judged by however many people see the video. And it's scary, but it's also a good feeling because I know that for all the people that write nasty comments or judge me the wrong way, that I'm helping someone out there who sends me a message for posting the video and posting that, it's all worth it. So I'm sorry for the huge, huge ramble. I just really needed to ramble today and you guys are the recipient, so I'm sorry. Now I did post this on the Facebook group the other day actually that I have another channel and I had this on my Google channel for like ages but I never created a YouTube account so ignore the name, it's the most ridiculous name in the whole planet but the channel is going to be my life basically because quite a lot of you wanted to see vlogs about what I do when I'm not sitting talking to a camera giving this emotional talk what do I do for my daily life so that video is going to be random clips either stuff I film on my phone as a funny video or if I go on like mini adventures and I'm going to take my camera or just having family days that's where they're all going to be posted so for people who just want Sprinkle of Courage videos, they are strictly for Sprinkle of Courage on this page and then for anyone else who wants to see my life or just my daily sort of stuff then it's going to be over on the channel and I've put all the links in the description box below and they're separated because a few of you were a bit confused they have the Sprinkle of Courage links and then my personal links like Twitter, Instagram and the YouTube channel. So check it out and let me know what you think. And there is going to be a behind the scenes video of sort of how I film a Sprinkle of Courage video going up very soon. Or it might even be up before you're watching this video. So check it out and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.